Brass and wood, spruce and hard ebony, cold drawn steel and soft felt. These are the hardware of music. Music, the passion of the creative soul expressed in sound. The expression of an artist's inner being. Piano music, the power of an orchestra at an artist's fingertips. 88 notes that can stir the depths of one's passion. And for seven days in December, instruments of wood and steel, brass and felt were alive with the sounds of some of the world's finest artists expressing themselves with a unique power, the power of two pianos, one passion. It's called the Murray Dranoff International Two Piano Competition. Duo piano teams from all over the world convene every other year on Miami Beach to compete against each other and to perform some of the world's most beautiful and interesting music. The teams arrive from literally all over the world for this competition. They've all auditioned for this event, first by submitting tapes of themselves, and then by being heard in concert by a small jury. The slate of almost 200 entrants is then carefully narrowed down to the 10 semi-finalists who are arriving today. Their common goal, to make music. The first order of business for each team is to come to the Lincoln Theater on Miami Beach's artsy South Beach to select which piano they'll play. The pianos are nine-foot Steinway concert grands, carefully tuned and adjusted to be ready for seven days and nights of very demanding performance. The Dranoff Two Piano Competition was started in 1987 by Loretta Dranoff to honor her late husband and two piano partner, Murray. Murray kept a diary for most of his life, and I enjoyed reading back, and reading back between some of the good days, the early days. And one night, and this was during the night that I did most of my reading, I read something that seemed to be a finger of God pointing at me, and it said, we are working so hard. He was talking about the two of us. We're working so hard. We're practicing all morning, teaching all afternoon, going to college at night. I wish there were a competition we could enter and earn some money. And the seeds of the Murray Dranoff International Two Piano Competition were planted. 1995 marks the fifth time that a roster of some of the world's finest two piano teams has gathered. Once each team has selected which piano they'll play, the real work begins. Because tomorrow, the jurors will hear them for the first time when the audition process begins. For most of us, music is just one part of our everyday life. But for these teams, music is their life. And when they go on stage today for the first time to be heard and judged by the competition's nine jurors, they'll be laying bare their musical hearts and souls for all to see and hear. That's what we try to do. We don't want to make it sound like it's coming from one piano, actually. We, we want to sound, it's okay to, to sound like a two piano. Like a dialogue. Of course, what each team hopes is that these conversations, these intangible dialogues of tone and sound, will move each juror 
not only to be a part of the conversation, but to be one with the conversation. We all have basic things that we all know objectively. The notes are right, the rhythms are correct, uh, the dynamics, we know all of those things when we start listening to the piece. But then there's the subjective thing of how much projects to each of us individually, and that's a very personal thing. And I think you recognize that pretty us. fast when you hear certain people that come out and create an aura of personal magic about themselves. I mean, otherwise, why just hire, hire an IBM machine and forget all of us? The whole point of performance and the great performance is there has to be an element of daring. For this competition, each team must prepare two programs of two piano music. Each program or audition lasts a full hour. They must also prepare a one-hour program of duet music, four hands on one piano, and the reward for being selected as one of the three finalists. The third place finisher will take home $2,500. The second place team will see $5,000, and the winning team will earn a $10,000 cash prize. The money is important, but no less important for these teams is making superior music. And finally, as a separate competition within the competition, each team must prepare a performance of a work that is especially commissioned for the Dranov. But back to the business at hand, there are still hours and hours of music to hear and play before the jurors will reach a decision on the finalists. When you first hear two piano music, there's a very special feeling that you experience. It's like hearing voices from a musical sphere that are at once lyrical and dissonant, a sound that's so far away from you that it's right beside you. Two piano music is not a recent art form. It dates back nearly 200 years BCD. That's before the compact disc, the CD. In those days, if you wanted to hear an orchestral piece of music, you had to wait until an orchestra was around to perform. And then you had to hope that they were going to play the piece you wanted to hear. But with two pianos, orchestral works were transcribed. And now, any family or town with two pianos could hear their favorite piece of music whenever they wanted to. You might say, that it was the original stereo, chamber music style. Well, for, for me, it's, it's like, I love one piano, but what I love more is two pianos. You know, you have a bigger sound, more reach, and you can do more. You have more, more ability of, of, of all kinds of techniques, yeah, musical, musical things. What makes one team's version of Mozart or Schumann sound different from the next? Interpretation. What is this untouchable, indefinable quality that goes into making music, into interpreting a piece? Certainly, there's emotion, there's style, there's the wealth of one's life experiences. But how do you melt that into your craft? But we, you have to be um, able and I don't know, open to, to hear and to feel what the other one wants and what she feels.
So much of a performance is listening and not playing. Hearing what your partner is doing, feeling the rhythms, and becoming a part of the melodious tapestry that you're both weaving. But always, on every performer's mind is, what do the jurors think? To appreciate fully what it takes to be selected for the competition, you need to come here. These are the practice rooms at the University of Miami School of Music, where at any given time, you'll hear two piano music filling the halls. Because in this competition, if you're not performing, you're practicing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Our practicing is based on a certain Japanese idea that only the moment that you're on stage is that moment that has to happen everything. I have a system of organizing ideas and it's, for me it works well when I'm trying to, you know, analyze the structure of the music and her voicing, my voicing. Where We play according to what's written. I mean, that's from the beginning. And after that, we try to be comfortable in our hands, actually to feel comfortable with the notes. Listening and playing, trying each other's ideas, and allowing the art of compromise to take over. After the mechanics of the piece are perfected, it comes down to a team's interpretation. And when it's working, the whole is indeed greater than the sum of its parts. I grew up in a little town called Malmesbury, which is just outside Cape Town. I grew up in New Hampshire, where my family still is. When we start learning a new piece, she would know exactly what I would do with something in advance, and I would know what she would want to do, and we laugh about it. You might think that there's a certain personality, a certain spirit that drives the music deep within each team. And you'd be right. For instance, duo Zakharov. While in Russia, they met at the conservatory in St. Petersburg, and they were soon married. In 1993, they immigrated to Israel. There, they became scholarship students at the Jerusalem Rubin Academy of Music and Dance. While music and scholarships make for a rich cultural life, they don't necessarily pay the bills. I was studying in school and he simply had to work. He found a job driving a truck. It was really a tragedy because he wasn't able to play at all for two years. And just four months before the competition, he quit working in order to prepare. He doesn't think he'll go back to that kind of work because it's not good work for a pianist to do. At this point in the competition, the jurors have heard all the teams at least once and they've started to form some preliminary opinions. Of course, one is very fond of saying that the standard is very high, of, which is a polite thing to say, but I, I'm glad to say that it is very high. If you consider the fact that 100-something teams applied and only 10 made it to this round, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to know that uh, it must be very high if this is the top 10 teams. Of course, that's both good and bad news for the teams. The good news is that we could pick any team because the, the standard is high. The bad news is that if we pick any team, it doesn't matter what team we pick, everybody's going to get upset. There's still another full day of auditions to go, followed by a day of duets, before the jurors will make a decision as to which teams will be in the finals. So at this point, there's only one thing any of the teams can do, practice. The light of inspiration. Where does one find it? For some, it comes after hours of painstaking trial and error. And for others, it comes at times least expected. Performing, it's not, not like that. It's, um, there's only the music, 
sure there's only, only the music, but um, there are a lot of other emotions. We were playing full risk to make it now, like we talked about. Full risk and every, every um, thing we have and every power we have. While there's scant time for diversions like sightseeing, each team seems to find a moment to get away. But while they may be away from the piano, they're never away from the music. Famous story about Rachmaninoff. The first time he came, he came to America on the boat. He just learned his piano concerto from from sight. He just wrote it, so he couldn't practice. He just looked at it, got it playing, saw the piano, and played it. Whether practicing physically at the piano or in the practice room of the mind. The stage is always beckoning, and the hunger to move the jurors is always there, pushing each team to achieve new heights of musical artistry. For any musician, the goal is to communicate, to communicate ideas and amorphous thoughts, dreams and whispers of musical inspiration to a listener, an audience. It's a very human thing to go on stage and be the focus. So if you don't use that, if you don't use the audience as your responding uh, background, as a, as a sounding board, what are you doing there? The more they respond to you, whether it's a bravo or clapping or just their facial expression, it just gives you such boost and it's just a great, you know, communication. And the underlying communication is between piano team and juror. How well that's going for each team is known only to the jurors themselves, and they're not about to tell us. At this point, each team has performed two one-hour programs. Tomorrow brings on the duets, four hands, one piano. And ultimately, the announcement of our three finalists. The schedule of events for today called for each team to perform a one-hour duet program. But that's changed. The jurors have decided that they've heard just about all they need to hear in order to select the three finalists. All they would like to hear today is each team's best half hour of duet music. We have to be very careful and watch out very clearly about all the moves you make. You make one different or, or wrong movement and you will I will uh, crash my hand crash or Martin's hand or, or put on the, on the note on, on his finger. You'll notice that over the course of the week, some teams have chosen to play with music, while other teams have chosen to have their entire program memorized. Not any other instrument is playing from memory. Sure. Not any other instrument, even chamber music, is played with music. If it would affect your uh, interpretation, then something is wrong with your interpretation. When you know the piece that well, when you have it memorized, um, I think you're able to be freer in your performance. Mm -hmm. One reason we like to perform with music is that um, if we would 
do it without music. We had to practice a lot. We want to keep it fresh. Certainly, it's not as easy to play a perfect performance from memory, but I think a musical performance is much easier to achieve. Playing with or without music is not the most important. The most important thing is if you play music at all. The competition has progressed to the point where the jurors have heard everything they're going to hear from each of the teams. As soon as there is a decision, they'll announce it, and then the finalists will have their work cut out for them. One of the common denominators for this competition has been the pianos. Finely tuned instruments like these can sound totally different depending upon whose fingers are playing the keys. And maintaining that precise standard falls into the hands of master tuner Carl Roederer from Steinway & Sons. We have two Steinway concert grands here. These are concert grands because they're nine feet long as opposed to a seven foot or a five foot piano that you might find in a recording studio or someone's home. Now, my job as the technician is to work with the pianos um, so that they sound essentially like one piano. Um, as you can see, the piano is comprised of many different elements. You have the bass strings, which are copper wound um, so that they have enough mass to produce low frequencies. You have the soundboard, which is a solid piece of spruce. That's what you actually hear out in the concert hall is the soundboard vibrating. And what I do is work with the strings and the tuning pins and the action. When I'm working with the action, what I try to do is to work with the felt on the hammers. The hammers strike the strings from underneath so that when I uh, adjust the felt, it should hopefully produce the same type of sound in both pianos, producing the same timbre. Now, when I tune the piano, I not only have to tune each piano well within itself, but I have to tune both pianos um, together so that if any given note that's struck on one piano, if it's struck simultaneously on the other piano, you should only hear one musical note, not clearly two different instruments. Now, when I'm through adjusting everything, of course, the artist comes to uh, sit at the piano and he or she will adjust the uh, artist bench, which has rotating handles to raise or lower the, the uh, bench, and then they'll sit at the keyboard. The keyboard is uh, 88 uh, black and white keys. We call them naturals and sharps. The naturals are covered in plastic, so they're environmentally correct, no longer ivory. Uh, the sharps are still ebony. And if my job is done right, when the artists sit at the piano, they should be able to completely forget about the mechanical instrument in front of them and just concentrate on music. We'll go out on the stage and talk to them. Tell them Where are the others? We now have the decision of our three finalists from the jurors. Making the announcement will be jury chair Ivan Davis. We have the three teams, and this is an alphabetical order, who will play Friday night. The concertos are Martone Basner. The Van Veen yes. Brothers. <laughs> Whoa, wonderful. And the Zacharons. So, thank you. We're all lying, and the best lie will win. Recreating the type of demanding music that the competition requires is not a nine to five job. The day starts early and oftentimes ends late. All of it devoted to music. In order to allow the teams to stay focused, each team stays with a host family. The family is responsible for all the musicians' needs, from feeding them to getting them to where they need to be when they need to be there. Well, you have to start the typical day the night before because these are very organized young men and they look at the schedule, what they have to do the next day because each day is different depending on Did what's happening. If you have to play at 10 o'clock in the morning you will, and you start at 8, uh, no, you start too late, 
I'm not the kind of a guy that uh, stands up out of the night and plays a concerto. It is heaven living with this music all week, let me tell you. That's really the heart of what I am in. At the same time the Van Veens are going to practice, the Lincoln Theater is alive with the sounds of a new piece of music. Six Variations for Two Pianos by Ned Rory. One interesting aspect of the Rorum is that no one has ever heard the piece before, so it gives the teams an opportunity to flex their interpretive muscle. I think we try to be very true to the score. We try to honor all of the intentions of the composer first. And I think it's important that we understand what message the composer is trying to send. Whatever performance we present, whatever interpretation we present, that it be as clearly defined as possible so that our audience can at least understand what's going on, even if it's... Even if they don't like it. This part of the competition is separate from the main competition, and the winner of the Rorum will debut the piece on Friday evening. By commissioning new works for two pianos at every competition, Loretta Dranoff has added some very important new works to the two piano repertoire. These are works that are currently being performed at recitals and in concert halls all over the world. I think we will all be very worried if we say, oh, that was perfect. I think that there's nothing to go from there. I wish there were three or four people that could play the Roram tomorrow night, but we have decided that the two people that will play the Rorum tomorrow night for its official world premiere are Mark Clinton and Nicole Norbany. For most of our teams, now is the time to unwind and relax a bit from this grueling week of practice and performance. But for our three finalists, there is no time to spare. The finals tomorrow night will come all too soon. The morning brings a day of heavy activity for our finalists. Rehearsals with conductor Neil Stolberg and the Symphony of the Americas start things off. For tonight's grand finale competition concert, each team is required to perform a movement from two different concerti. The Allegro from Mozart's Concerto in E-flat for two pianos and orchestra is required of all the finalists. Each team is then free to select a concerto of their own choice. Both Duo Zakharov and Martin Botzner have selected the Larghetto from the Concerto in D minor for two pianos and orchestra by Francis Poulin. Piano duo Van Veen have chosen the taxing Allegro Molto from Bela Bartok's Concerto for two pianos, percussion, and orchestra. For some team members, this is the first time they've performed with an orchestra. In order to rehearse the concerti at home, they use three pianos, the third piano taking the place of the orchestra. But this time, it's the real thing, with a real payoff. George Bernard Shaw said it best, that the rich talk about music and musicians talk about money. But it's very important for musicians to be able to live. So the fact that we have cash prizes is terribly important. But that's not the do-all and end-all. The most important thing for these people who come in, these competition contestants, is to develop a name, to develop a career. Now, please, 442, I, I prefer just to try it at uh, 393, so 383. It's all, all quite good, except for 63 in the wings. Can we play, please? Conducting the Symphony of the Americas is Neil Stolberg. Maestro Stolberg is one of the world's most gifted young conductors, having led the Philadelphia Orchestra, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the Haifa Symphony, and the St. Louis Symphony, to name just a few. I'm also a performer as a pianist. Um, I'm able, first of all, I, I know the literature pretty well. And second of all, I'm also able, I think, to help the players 
in their uh, in their work with the orchestra. There's a feeling on the day of a performance that's like nothing else. Your heart beats a bit faster, your hands are more pliable, your whole being breathes music. And in the concert hall, there's a feeling of anticipation, as though you're sitting in a void which must soon be filled with the atmosphere of music. Stay tuned. <laughs> the first performance tonight is from piano duo Van Veen, with the first movement of Bartok's concerto for two pianos, percussion, and orchestra. You'll notice that the pianos are positioned a bit differently than they were earlier in the week. This is because Bartok wrote specific instructions in his score for the positioning of the instruments. He wanted a true stereo effect, with one piano clearly coming from the left, the other clearly from the right. This is a piece of major uh, technical difficulty, not only in terms of the parts for the pianists themselves, but also in putting those parts together with the two solo percussionists and the orchestra. The Bartok is a knotty, thorny, complicated thing to put together, uh, but it's been very worthwhile to work on it with them, and they play it extremely well.
The Larghetto from Poulenc's Concerto in D minor is a very lyrical piece, one that yet lends itself to a variety of interpretation. We start with Duo Zakharov. The Poulenc is a more coloristic piece. It really shows a lot more palette of uh, touch and, and sound available to each of the pianists, and also a little bit more freedom of their imagination. Thank you. 
As you sit and listen, you almost feel that if you reached out your hand, you could grasp the notes as they fly past you. There's an energy, a spirit, that comes alive when hands touch keys and felt hammers strike strings. And that is abundantly clear when all three teams perform the same piece. The Allegro for Mozart's concerto in E-flat major for two pianos and orchestra. complicated as some of the other literature is that has been played at this competition. The Mozart Concerto for two pianos, in its simplicity, is probably the most difficult and the most telling. Um, every note counts. There's no place to really hide.
This is now the hardest time for any team. All the notes have been played. There's nothing left to practice. There's nothing more any of them can do to convince the jury. There's nothing left to do but wait. The three teams, it seems to me, are quite evenly matched and, uh, and all really are performing at a very high standard. Any of the three teams could be the winners tonight. At least one of the teams that I expected so much more gave yeah, so agree. much less. I think we performed well. We are happy and we did what we wanted to do. With. It's okay. Whatever will happen, it's okay. My idea of really musical worth was confirmed tonight. For me, the important thing was that we got into the finals. I didn't think we'd get into the finals. It was a shock to me that we did. And from here on, it's not important. I didn't vote the same way in any of the rounds, I must confess. They were close, punched well, were up they, the Were they proportionately right. the same? They were yeah. close. You, you also can play the music like in, in so many various ways. And if you don't like to play, we, if you don't like the, the way we play it. Go home, go on. It's not ending here, the world, is it? I think, in what I think the best thing is that we have not chosen IBM machines. We've chosen human beings. We are down to the news you've been waiting for. Tonight's performance confirmed, I think, our opinions. There were some surprises, but basically, this is as unanimous a decision as can possibly be with this number of people. So the third prize award goes to the Zakharov duo. Zakharov, are they here? Uh, this is sort of, it's always terrible, it's anticlimactic, because as soon as I tell you who won the second prize, I believe we'll be aware who won the first prize. So, let's get it over with. The second prize goes to the Van Veen brothers. And now our first prize winners is, are, of course, Marton Botzner, who I think are as musical a set of two ladies that I've ever had the privilege of hearing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, congratulations. I really am proud of you. While there can be only one winning team, if you were to take a tally of this past week and look at what really happened, you'd find that, as always, the real winner has been the music. This is Martin Bookspin.